All right, so today we're gonna clone ourselves. Okay, everybody, today I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to uh, finish the process of cloning yourself in post. If you watch my other video, which you'll see a link down below in the comments, or in the notes, I should say, um, watch that first on how to shoot yourself in a bunch of different spots, and now we're gonna take these into Photoshop and clone it so that it looks like we're in many different locations in one photograph. So the first thing I do is I generally start in Lightroom, and I like Lightroom. Uh, to keep track of all my images and that's what I use to, as my main database or data keeper for all the images so I can find them relatively easy. And he said that these are the pictures that I shot while I was doing that video out there at the campsite and I basically walked around and put myself in a number of different locations. So I selected the ones that I want and they're actually over here in the quick collection. You can see here are all the ones that I want to use uh, for this particular one. Now, what I want to do is I want to highlight them. The easiest way for me to do that is to click on it, hold down the shift key, and click the last one, and all of them will highlight. And there are other ways, too. You want to right-click on any of the any of the uh, pictures here and go to Edit In, and then down here, open as layers in Photoshop. We want all of these to come in as layers, not just separate images, because we do want to work on them in one uh, section of Photoshop. So I'm going to open them up as layers, and uh, it'll take a little bit of time to process this and we'll speed this up a little bit so that you can see it uh, when we come back. Okay, so as you can see, Photoshop here placed all of these images on top of each other in layers and um, as I click through, you can see that I'm in different spots in each one, but you notice that sometimes the background or, well, the trees are always going to change. These are going to change. These have remained pretty steadily, pretty steady, I should say, um, because of the way that I took them on the tripod. But just to make sure that everything lines up well, I'm going to click on the top layer, and I'm going to hold down my shift and click on the bottom layer so that all of them are highlighted. And I want to go up to Edit. And what I'm going to tell Photoshop to do is I want it to align all of these images. So I want it to auto-align layers, not auto-blend, but auto-align the layers. And I'll click on that. And I'll leave that as auto. That will work. And I'll click OK. And what Photoshop is going to do is in the background, it's going to start taking all of these layers and making sure that they all blend together, that all these benches match up, uh, the rocks, anything that stays stationary, it's going to try to make sure that it matches it up as well as it can. So again, we'll speed up this process and talk to you in a sec. Okay, so Photoshop has finished aligning all these layers and you will see that some of these layers, and let me just click on just one here, you'll see that some of these layers have a little gap at the top and we'll take care of that in the end. But uh, yeah, Photoshop aligned all these so that everything matches behind. So now when I click on uh, off the eyeballs here, you'll see that even though the trees may continue to move because it's a windy day, uh, the rocks and the benches, uh, they're all pretty solid now. They're not really moving. You see me in different locations, but you don't see any of that moving. So I'm going to come down to the bottom here, and uh, I'm going to notice that that walking one at the bottom, uh, when I click on the one above it, is there's a guy, there's one of me back here, and I think I want to keep this one rather than the one that's walking towards me. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this bottom layer because I don't really want to use that one. And I'll just trash that one. So I'm going to click on the eyeball on the one above it, and when I click on that eyeball, this layer becomes the layer that I'm seeing and it's going to block out the one below it. So you can see that I'm standing over in this area right here and you sort of want to remember that because it's going to help you out here in a minute. Now the way that I do it is I put a mask on each layer and I want to put a black mask on each layer so it hides the entire layer and then I'll paint white on the mask so that only I will show through on that particular layer here. So when I select this layer the easiest way to do that is to you can either click on this layer and then invert the mask because the mask will come in automatically as white. But a little simple way of doing that is just hold on the Alt Option key. When you click on the mask, and it automatically comes in as a black mask. And that just makes it easier and saves you some steps. Now as you see that this top layer here, this particular picture, has disappeared. And if I forgot where I was at, which I did, it's right in this area here. But if I had forgotten where I was at, I could just hold down my shift and click on that layer mask and you see that I pop right back in so that I can know where I should paint. So I'm going to paint right in this area right here 
and I want to use my paintbrush and I want to make sure that I paint with white because if I paint with black it's not going to do anything on a black mask. So my foreground color needs to be white and I'm going to click on this little triangle here, these little arrows right there and that's going to switch my foreground background color. Another way of doing that is just pressing the X key. Every time I press the X key it changes the colors or swaps them out. Now if you should have different colors here, like let's say for example you had red on one of your colors or gray uh, you could just hit the black and white and automatically change it back to the default color which is black and white. So on my white here I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger by pressing down my open bracket keys, the square bracket keys next to the P on the keyboard and uh, then I'm going to start painting right here with white uh, and that's even going to include my shadow where it should be there too. So you see that I painted this little white area right here and that allows me to show through on this particular picture onto this picture here. So the process is relatively the same all the way up. Uh, as I come through some I'll probably end up not using them but I'll know when I click on and off where they if they overlap each other. So the next one I click on I see that I'm over here now and again I'm going to highlight this layer hold down alt and click on my mask and come back on over here and I already forgot where I was at so I'm going to hold my shift click on that and there I was on that rock and I'm going to just go ahead and paint oops paint on that rock right there white and paint myself in and make sure that I get any shadow that may be around me and I'll just continue this way uh, making my mask and I make it oops let me undo that I made a mistake I had this layer selected I gotta remember to select that layer before I hold down my alt and click on my mask there and now I'm going to paint right here and paint myself looking into the trash can for some unknown reason apparently I'm trying to find something here now I'm going to reveal this layer here and I can see that I'm in between everything right there so again I'm going to highlight that layer alt my mask and then I'm going to paint myself in right here now in painting this in you want to make sure that your brush is set to a soft edge. You want a soft edge here. You want to make sure your hardness is at zero. You don't want your hardness at 100% because your edge is going to be too hard around the edge. And what it's going to do is going to leave, if there should be some slight variances in a little bit of color here, it's not going to blend well. But having a soft edge brush will allow these edges on the mask to be relatively soft. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up this process as I continue uh, painting myself in here. Now I'm going to zoom in right here. Um, you're going to notice that this area right here, I want to get a much smaller brush. And I'm going to go ahead and just paint my edge to make sure that the edge of me is in there pretty good. But you notice that my soft edge brush is overlapping onto this right here. And I don't want that to, hap to happen. So I'm going to change that to, in this case, I'm going to change it to a hard edge brush. And go ahead and uh, click out of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm going to follow, I'm going to change my color also. And you notice that that was a hard edge brush. I'm going to follow along the edge here and try to get it right up next to my shirt if I can uh, without overlapping into it. And you see that I can do that right there. And that way I have a sharp edge on my shirt and right there. So again, I will go back on out, zoom out, and I will continue the process. Okay, so here's my final image. Um, I left a couple out. I left uh, this one out because you can see that I block quite a bit when I'm that large. And this one too also would be blocking an area behind me. So I left that one out too. So these two I didn't use. And you'll notice that this one here, I block myself looking at a trash can in the back, which I don't mind. I think it's better that I have something of me closer uh, than this one back here. So that fills the frame a little better. So I decided to use this one and have it go ahead and block the one out behind it. Um, so once I have all that done, I'm going to come on over here to my crop tool. And I'll bring in my crop here and bring it up and in over here to get rid of that camera that we have right there. And I may leave a little bit of that and just sort of clone stamp that out maybe. And let's see how that crop looks.
and I like it uh, I'm going to take uh, the clone stamp tool here and I'll make sure that's aligned sample current and below and I'm just going to have it sample all layers clone stamp and let me as a matter of fact let me make sure that I'm not messing up anything by adding a new layer there to clone stamp too and there I can just clone stamp that right away and I could have done it for the whole thing but I, I think they crop it in makes the picture look better anyway so here it is uh, you can see that I'm cloned in all over the place here that uh, as I get rid of each of these layers you see that one layer on top of the other and all it's doing is it's just allowing the part where I'm at to come through to show through here let me get off my clone stamp tool here it allows this part to show through without anything else so other methods uh, use a white mask and you paint black in but then every time that you paint another one you have to actually duplicate all of these little paintings on every single mask as you continue on up uh, to allow them all show through so there's my final one where I clone myself all over the place and again the link below on how to do this um, so in your camera I tell you how to set it all up and go about shooting it and here is how you do it in post so have fun with it and uh, create all kinds of pictures where you're doing a number of things or somebody else or just put in a lot of people or a lot of things into the picture that you want you can use this in a variety of ways just have fun with it till next time talk to you later wait don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you get notifications of all the new videos that i put out each week